How's it going everybody? In this video, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at our next NAT topic, which is going to be both static and dynamic NAT. We're gonna start off with dynamic NAT when we go through and set up our deployment, but then we're also gonna roll out static NAT. We're not going to deal with port translation, in other words, going from like 8080 to 80, we're not gonna do that, but we are gonna take a look at setting up a dynamic NAT range as well as a static NAT configuration for allowing access from the outside inbound. Okay, so the first thing that we have to go do when we set this up is we actually need to take an address range from each one of our internet connections that we have and we need to come up with something that we can leverage for the address block that we're leveraging. Okay, so now by default all these internet connections on the V edge side are dot two. So that means that dot three through dot two fifty four are pretty much available. Now because we know that on both sides VH3 and VH4 that's the option, in my testing I can't say that I've ever seen it in documentation. Uh, it could be there but I just haven't seen it. Where you can only have for dynamic NAT, I'll just put dyne NAT uh, 32 IPs that can be allocated for a dynamic allocation. That simply means that whenever, say, user 1 wants to go out to the internet and he sends the traffic outbound, that whatever IP address is first available, let's say it's 20, then he'll get the IP address of 20, uh, the public IP address of 20. And if user 2 goes out, then he'll get 21 and at 22 and 23 and so on as the traffic goes out and users start needing to go out and use internet connectivity right and then when user one is done he'll 20 will be released back into the operational capacity now we're going to have to come up with an address range or figure out what it is that we're going to go do so we're going to go max it out with 32 so 32 is actually a pretty easy number to subnet in this particular case. So the way I, I broke it down is I figured this out ahead of time. So if 32 is our range, right? We have 32, let's actually, let's do it over here. If 32 is our range, then zero is gonna be the beginning because that's gonna be the network ID for the 192.1.3.0. 32 is our range, so that means that the next one is gonna be 64, then 96, then 128, then 160, then 192, then 224, then 256, right? So I took one right here in the middle so that the back half could be used for whatever we want, the, the, the lower half can be used as well. So this is gonna be our range, 96 through 127, okay? Now, on top of that, when we have that uh, defined, the other thing that we have to, to keep in the back of our minds is when we're doing our static NAT configuration, so allowing external access internally, so whether it's opening up a HTTP session or whatever the case might be, we have to grab an IP out of the dynamic NAT range. So I'm going to allocate 127 to be able to talk to the loopback of iOS 13, which is gonna be 10, 31, 30, 13, and then I'm gonna do the same thing here for iOS 15, which will be 10.4.150.15. So those are both gonna get .127 public IPs. So when we go to ping, say 10. Dot, or I know, when we go to ping 192.1.3.127, we'll actually be pinging 10.3.130.13. And when we open up a web connection, that's where that will go. And that's basically how that will operate. I'm going to keep the static PAT configuration in play which will still mean that we go to test it, that when we tell net to dot two, so 192.1.3.2, we're gonna be able to connect to 10.3.13.13. So with that all in play and us understanding all of that, let's go ahead and clear the screen. Let's go ahead and get this set up. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull up vManage. We're gonna bring vManage over. I'm gonna go ahead and log in to vManage, so admin and admin. So now that I'm logged in, I am gonna come over here to the templates page. I'm gonna click on feature. I'm gonna expand this out, organize them. I kind of wish they would be automatically organized, but it's whatever. I'm gonna come down to single site and I'm gonna click on G0 slash zero. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead here to edit. 
go ahead and let that pop up real quick. We're going to come down to NAT. And underneath NAT, since we already have it enabled, one of the first things we have to do underneath the NAT pool range start, this is where our first IP address is going to go. So here I'm just going to click device specific because it's going to be specific per device. So I don't want to go in and manipulate it here. Do the same thing with here, device specific. So now that I've got that in play, I can go ahead and click on update. And that's going to apply to both VH3 and VH4. I'm going to come in here and edit device template. And I'm going to give it the star, which is going to be 10, sorry, in this case here, it's going to be 192.1.3.96 through 192.1.3.127. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and click on update. And then do the same thing over here on VH4. The 192.1.4.96 and 192.1.4.127. Click on update and then click next and configure devices. Go ahead and push that config down and then after a moment or so, we will be in good shape. I'm gonna pause until this guy is uh, committed. All right, so the configuration was pushed. So I'm gonna go ahead and minimize that and pull up the CLI for our devices. I'm gonna bring this guy over and we're gonna go ahead and take a look at our configuration. We'll go ahead and log in real quick to the V edges. Show run VPN zero, zero interface, GE zero star zero. And so what you can see here at the top is we have a NAT pool range 192.1.3.96 through 127. Now, throughout this, the rest of this configuration, we go to do our testing, things are gonna be, it should do one do dot 96 and so on and so forth. So let's go ahead and test this out. So if I go to iOS 13 and I try to ping 1.2.3.4, that should work. There it goes. Took it a couple seconds for it to do its thing. If I do a trace route to 1.2.3.4 numerically, I go out my local internet connection, right? If I come back over here to VH3, and uh, I do have to give a quick shout out to the Dark Knight. Uh, <laughs> serious screen name, uh, not, a, not a pun at all. Uh, subscriber and some of the watches of the videos on a regular basis has given me some feedback through the comments on some of the outputs. So this is a shout out to you. So I'm gonna go ahead and show IP NAT filters and then pipe tab. So you'll see that we have some communication going out back and forth. We can see that VPN one, we have a communication coming dot 96, dot 97, dot 98, so on and so forth from 1030, 13, 13. So we can see as more traffic is generated, we can see that it's working the way that it's intended to. If I go back to 13, I do a telnet to 192 dot, or sorry, let's do 1.2.3.4, Rob and Cisco, and well, as soon as I type the password incorrectly, Rob and Cisco, uh, and then who, we can see we are dot 96. So it's working as we would expect it to. We're gonna go ahead and exit out, and that's how you do dynamic NAT. Now, if I was to try that from router 15, be the same concept, right? If we come in here, we do a ping to 1.2.3.4, the ping takes a couple seconds for it to respond back as we're trying to build a NAT statement, which we did. If we look on VH4 and we look at the this output right here, we can see an active ICMP ping going out and everything looks pretty good in that respect. So awesome stuff. Now, the next thing for us to go test out would be the dynamic, or I'm sorry, the static NAT, because we're doing dynamic NAT at this point. So I'm gonna jump back over here to V Edge or vManage, excuse me. Oh, no, I'm sorry, vManage. One of these days I'll get it right. I come back over here to templates. I'm gonna go to feature template, and then I'm going to open this up a little bit to gig00 for single site VPN0. Come back over here to this guy, and go to edit. And then underneath the NAT construct, I'm going to click on static NAT, and this is where you would create a new static NAT. Remember that the Whatever IP address you want to use for your static NAT entry has to be inside of the NAT range pool. Just keep that in mind. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new static NAT. The source IP in this case here will be, uh, I'm gonna come in, will be device specific, and the translated address will be device specific as well. The source VPN will be 
I'm going to say device specific. In this case here it'll be one, but I'm just trying to show you that you can do it either way. And then the static NAT direction, we're gonna go ahead and say global is gonna be inside. Okay, now this is not the same thing. This will not be used for allowing, say, the INET router to telnet into router 13 or router 15, for example. This will be for communication for an outbound, uh, so an external device that wants to reach an internal source. For example, if the INET router wanted to open up a web connection to the iOS 13 device with the router running the web service, that would be allowed. That's what this is enabling. This is not the same thing as doing a static PAT and allowing the communication through. At least in my testing, static PAT, or the static NAT doesn't allow the communication to go through that way. So the IP address that we point to on, on here for our connectivity internally, so web access and things like that, will be to whatever the public IP address we give it in the static NAT config. So dot .127 for both VH3 and VH4. However, if I wanted to telnet into router 13 from INET, that would be a different configuration. That's gonna be the static PAT, which we'll take a look at as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on add and click on update. And I'm gonna go over here to update the device template. We have some entries to add in. So the source IP address that we're gonna be doing this for will be uh, 10.3.130.13. This, the public IP will be 192.1.3.127, and then the source VPN will be one. Click on update. Do the same thing here, edit. This will be the internal IP, so 10.4.150.15, and then 192.1.4.127, and then down here, this will be VPN one. Click on update. Go ahead and click next to push that config out, and I'll show you the config once it's been pushed. So while that gets pushed out, I'm gonna go ahead and say, I'm gonna uh, pause the video. All right, so the config was pushed. If we go back over to the vEdge devices, pull up the CLI, and we look at iOS 13, if I was to try to telnet, let me go ahead and um, do a telnet to 1.2.3.4, Rob and Cisco, and type in who, you can see it's coming from dot 96. But if I exit out and I do a telnet and I whack the source from loopback zero, that should go out as well. There it goes, Rob and Cisco. Of course I type in the password wrong. Rob and Cisco, who, you can see it's coming in. Oh, it's dot 97, that's weird. Um, it should be natting over to, let me check the config on VH3. So if I do a show run VPN zero interface GE zero slash zero, that should be coming from 127 is where that should come from. So let me go back to 13 and exit out. Loop back zero, show IP interface brief. Oh, sorry, not loop back zero, uh, 130, my, my mistake. 130 not loop back zero. My apologies, let's try that one more time. We're gonna try that one more time. Rob and Cisco, and then who? 127, okay, there it's working. If we go back to VH3 and we do a show IP NAT filter pipe tab, we'll see that there is an active connection going out to it, going to this IP, this is my source public IP is 127. So it is working as a, the way that it's supposed to. And you can see that 13, 13, 13, 13, when it went out to a destination of 1.2.3.4 via Telnet, it had the IP address of 192.1.3.97. So you can see it's working the way that it's expected to, right? Now, here's the, the part that gets a little interesting. Let's go ahead and exit out now. If I was to go to the INET router, for example, and try to Telnet to 192.1.3.127, when I tested this configuration out, it would not allow a, a telnet. And <laughs> ironically, now it's working. So I tested this out, I kid you not, last night, and I did a telnet connection to this. It did not go through. I was like, but why? I don't know why. Now it's working. We type in Rob and Cisco. Of course, I type in the wrong password. Rob and Cisco. Now I'm on 13. So. 
go figure. This is what it's supposed to do, but it did not when I originally tested it. So let me go ahead and exit out real quick. I'm gonna go ahead and, oh, darn it. One second while I wait. Okay, so I tested that out and it does work. So we're in good shape there. So now what this also means from the INET route, let me go ahead and exit out. If I come in here and I do a telnet to that same IP address, 192.1.3.127 via port 80, that also opens. If I go check back the edge three and do the tab, we can see an inbound connection coming in, right? And that's what we wanna see. It's coming from the public source address is this IP address. So we know that it's uh, the, the destination address looks a little bit weird, but um, it is working the way that it's supposed to. So we have an inbound connection coming in. If we look on th 13, we do a show IP HTTP connections, server connections. We can see that 192.1.3.1 is the remote IP address and that it's working the way that it's supposed to. So that's basically what I wanted to test out and make sure that it was operational before we move forward. Okay, this ladies and gentlemen is how you configure dynamic NAT and static NAT at the same time. This is what you should see. So when you are on the outside looking in, now again, um, wait, I'm sorry, let me finish my statement. When, uh, when you're on the outside, you're trying to gain access to the inside, the static NAT is what allows that to happen, okay? I don't have a static pad entry on VH3. So if we look back over here and do a show run VPN zero, interface GE zero slash zero, I do not have a static pad entry. So I'm not doing a port forward. I'm allowing NAT traffic to come through naturally. So with that being said, in this case here, it's working the way that we need it to, right? So that means that if I need to go through and do any additional configuration, there are options for that to, for me to do. But right now I don't need to go and create a static pad for doing port forward because it's not necessary. But when I did my testing on it last night, I was like, oh, let me see if I can't find that real quick for you and show you what I'm talking about. Okay, I did find it. It's actually right up the road here a little bit. Let me scoot up here just a little bit. So right here, I was actually testing the config. Let me scoot up just a little bit higher. Right here, I tried to do a telnet. Blam, connection reset by user. I couldn't connect into it. Like it would not allow me to do so. But I came down a little bit and then uh, I was just like, I literally, <laughs> I laid down to go to sleep and as I'm sitting there, I'm like, okay, why is that not working? So you know how things, you know, your mind keeps wandering why it's not working. Then I did the telnet, blam, it worked, right? And I was on iOS 13. I'm like, oh, well, I just have to have a static pad and problem solved. And then I go test it with you guys and blammo, it works without a problem, right? And it's just ironic that it did what it did. And of course I type in the password wrong again. But the point being here is that I wanted to prove that it would work. A static NAT should allow bi-directional traffic to go back and forth. And when we do a who, we can see that, and I have domain lookup turned on on this guy, that we should be 192.1.3.1 is where we should be coming from. So with that being said, we know we're in good shape there, which it's that that is where we're coming from. The point being is if we look on here in BH3 and we do a do the tab, we should see an active connection coming in and that it's going to tell that, but the I'm coming from 192.1.3.1, but I'm going to the destination of 10.3.130.13. So I'm coming in through the VH3, jumping over to iOS 13, and I'm hitting the loopback address, which is going to simulate an internal network, right? So it could be a different IP, not connected to the router, but as long as the router can reach it, that's really all that matters. So that would be a server sitting behind the router. This, this, uh, the loopback just happens to be an address that's being advertised that is reachable via OSPF. Because if I was to look at, do a show IP route for VPN one, we're gonna see that 1030 right here, this address right here is coming in through OSPF. So I have an internal route to it. So with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, that is static NAT and dynamic NAT. Not terribly difficult. We're gonna take a look at looking at a little bit of a different scenario in the next video. But until next time, guys, take it easy. Thanks for stopping by and we'll catch you guys in the next one.